Hello everyone, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel. Today is Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. It's been a while, so welcome back. Welcome. Uh, if you're new, thank you for dropping by today. Thanks for dropping by if you're not new. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it's been a while. I actually have a ton to talk about today. Um, I'm going to, today I'm actually going to start with crochet. I usually start with cross stitch. So today I have cross stitch, crochet, and some sewing to sew, show you. I'm actually, I'm going to start with crochet just because we're having a pretty big heat wave here. As you can see, I'm already like totally glistening and I'm really hot because I have garments to show you. So I'm going to start with crochet. And I don't think I mentioned it, but this is a channel about the crafty things I get up to. So here we go. Okay. Um, it was a good month. So I think I last filmed near the end of May last time. So I have been busy doing lots of stuff. I've got two garments to show you. Two sweaters. So the first one is what I'm wearing. And this was a drops pattern. It's just, it's called Amber. And there's the pattern and I changed the sleeve length <clears throat> mostly just because I was tired of working on it so turn it into a short sleeved as uh, a few people on Ravelry did um this is what I used cotton ripple cakes so it's a number four well this is three so it kind of, sometimes it feels like a three, sometimes it feels like a four, because it's sort of this rumbly, has this rumbly texture to it that you can see. I use just over one skein of this. Um, so yeah, it's, it feels a little heavy. It would be better for, you know, when it's not like almost 100 degrees outside. Um, but anyway. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to try to stand up. The dog's under my chair, so. Because it's the hottest place to be, right? Okay. So this is how it turned out. I, I didn't join the bottom here just to give it a little bit more, um, I guess, flex room around my hips. I made this small. So you, you do back panel, front panel sleeves. Oh, sorry, it's so warm in here. <laughs> um, the pattern itself, it's pretty good. I do find drops patterns a little difficult sometimes just to get ahead with, but once you kind of figure it out, then you're good. Very popular because a lot of people make them, so that's quite helpful because there's always lots of little tips if you're on Ravelry that you can find. Um, I made this, I started off making the medium and then I ended up switching down to the small just because the medium was going to be a little too big and I find that in general drops patterns fit on the bigger side. So I thought that this, the small does fit me better, but I did have to leave that little um, split at the bottom just for my hip so it wouldn't be too tight there. And this is worked from the bottom up. And it goes very, very quickly. Um, I believe I got one side done in one evening. So yeah, it's very quick. Um, and I like it. It's just really hot <laughs> right now. But I love the color. I like the way it fits. I have washed it already. So the, the yarn says machine wash, washable and dryable. It just doesn't say what temperature so I just washed it on regular and then I dried it on permanent press and it shrunk up a little bit which was great and it softened up so that's good and yeah so there we have my first garment so I'm going to pause you and then I'm going to put on my second sweater okay so this was sweater number two and this is made with a uh, I think it's lace weight or is it thread yarn and this is 
Red Heart, It's a Wrap, and I can't remember the colorway because I threw out the ball band, but it was the blue one. And the pattern was from I Like Crochet. It's a digital magazine, and I had a subscription for a couple of years. It's called the Lace Diamond Top. That's what it looks like. This was, again, super easy to do, but because it's made with lace weight, it takes forever. But I'm going to show it to you. I really love the blue on the top. So it did change colors. <laughs> Dog. So unfortunately, it changed colors right across the middle, which is the worst place for it to do it. However, it's okay. So this is what it looks like. And the seam is on the side. So I definitely need to work on my seaming. But because it's underneath the arm, it's not so visible as if it was up the middle of the back. So super happy with this one. Um, I did have to go back because where it joins at the shoulders, so you're working the one, you work the one side and then the one shoulder and then you join here. Um, so where you were working off of the first row, it was really pulling the stitches out. So I did have to go back when I finished. I made sure to save some of this color and then I went back and I just tightened, tightened it up so they weren't all loose like that. So all in all, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I've been wearing this one quite a bit. Don't think I've washed this one yet, but I believe it's all cotton. So I'm just gonna have to be careful. Um, yeah, so I got two sweaters done this summer. So I think I'm actually, I think I've met my sweater goal for the year. I think so. Um, but yeah, so that's what I have there. Okay, so when I finished those, I started working on, I'm trying to get my yarn stashed down. So I thought the best way to do it would be to get the bulkiest stuff first. So that means cakes. So I had two cakes plus one skein of the Karen cotton cakes. And I can't remember, I think this, it's not dried roses, it's something rose. Um, yeah, so two cakes plus one skein, because the skein was left over from a couple years ago uh, when they first started selling the Karen cotton cakes and they just sold them in the small skeins. So I wanted to make a big cotton shawl for when you're sitting outside at night and you could just wrap it up around you, but it's not too hot. and It'll kind of keep the mosquitoes off of you. So this thing is huge. Because it's 600 grams. But I love it. So the pattern I used for this one is the Mystic Morning Wrap by Alexandra Tavell, Two of Wands. And this is a free pattern. And I got that from... Ravelry and I will link all of the patterns below eventually. So this very easy. Um, it did get a little boring especially near the end. Sometimes my little eyelet rows didn't really match up but I didn't really care and then to finish it off I just did a little five double crochet scalloped border and I really like it. Uh, let's see, what else can I say about it? I hardly had any yarn left. I think I had 18 grams left over, which was perfect. So that'll end up going, I don't know, in a Swiffer cloth or something. It's so nice. Now the only thing I don't like about this pattern is it's super pointy. So the point on it goes down actually past my knees. However, at the same time, that means I'm also sitting on it when I'm outside and that's, you know, fine too. 
So obviously it's been too hot here lately to wear this, but I'm sure I will get a chance later on. But look at those colors. I just love it. All of the, it's showing a much more purple in the camera, but there's like beautiful roses and mauves and the cream and the kind of like coffee color. I love it. So yeah, happy to have that out of the closet, but into something beautiful. Now, if I could just stay up past 9.30, I could actually enjoy this outside. Nice. I'll just have to get up early. Okay, I finished my June socks. No, my May socks. So I've been working on these. So I finished those, and that was made with Perfect Pair by Loops and Threads. So there we go. And I love how those turned out. Love, love, love it. And my June socks was made. This was a gift I got. It's Indigo Quail by Darn Good Yarn. So this was a sock of the month, I guess. Anyway. This is, I was gifted this, and it came in two little balls of yarn that were wound exactly the same, so your socks would look exactly the same, and they do. So I just stitched and stitched and stitched until, uh, basically until the little mini skeins were done, and it was perfect. And they're a good size. Now, I mean, it's not the prettiest but it's still fun so I was happy to have those done and I got finished these like well before the middle of the month so I've had a nice break from socks so that's good because then I can look forward to my July socks I think that's it for crochet, for finishes, anyway. Um, oh man, I'm so hot and I'm so sorry. I know this is like completely disjointed, which is really hot. Okay, so I, after finishing the shawl and the sweaters and the socks and it was time to start something new and I couldn't decide. So what I used to do, because then you kind of want to start everything at once. So what I used to do a couple years ago, and I thought it would be fun to do that now, is I call it a crazy seven, and I will start usually seven, well, I'll start seven projects, sometimes one each day, just smaller things. And they're often things that I'll think of when I'm stitching a larger project, and I think, oh, I really want to do that, like fingerless gloves or something. But then I never, when I want to start something new, I want to start something bigger. So those often get overlooked. So I picked seven projects. I haven't started them all yet. I'm just going to show you two that I started. And that's what I'm going to be working on for the next little while. So it's funny because after I finished the shawl, I said, okay, the shawl is, was so big. I'm not going to do another shawl for a while. But I started two more shawls. So the first one I started was a virus shawl. And I don't think I've actually made a virus shawl before. Um... I maybe made a, a just a little kind of kerchief one, but I've never made a full shawl. So I started one of those. And this is Unforgettable. Yeah, Red Heart Unforgettable. And I believe it's the stained glass colorway. Beautiful jewel tones. I thought that that would be super pretty. So I got the first seven rows done. I think seven. No, the first ten rows done. And then I can just continue on. So I have two skeins of this, and I'm just going to work it until I'm done. And the other shawl I started was, it's called the Fields of Provence Shawl, and it's from Fiberflux. 
and the yarn I'm using is King Cole Curiosity. And that's what the colors look like. Showing a little bit more purple for you. This is, yarn is super soft. It's all acrylic. And I've had this for, I don't know, a number of years now. And I've started about three different things with it. And then I kept pulling them out. But this is going to be its final, final project. So this is what I have so far. I'm almost finished the first cake. And this shawl starts from the point up and just works outward. So again, it's a very easy pattern to do, which is probably why it's grown so quickly. I think I've worked on this maybe two days now. The only thing I don't like about it is it starts from the point up, but this is not a point and it keeps curling. So if you can see, it goes like that. So I'm thinking, Maybe I'll just go back on the other side and just make a few of the same kind of stitch pattern. I don't know if I could do that or not, just to make it more of a point. Because that's the only thing that I don't like about this. But other than that, I mean, the colors are I think they're quite pretty. And then this will be, likely both of these shawls will just be for the gift away pile. So there, that's what I have been working on for crochet. I think that's it. I mean, it was a lot. And I also plan on, so as part of my Crazy 7, I'll be starting some fingerless gloves. I've got a scarf started, just a linen stitch one. But I don't have enough to show you what it would look like. And I can't remember what else. Maybe a blanket in there. I am not sure. Okay, so that's it for crochet. Um... I'm going to try to remember to timestamp this stuff, which I probably should have said in the beginning because if you were here just for the sewing or for the cross stitch, you would have wanted to know that in the beginning. But anyway, um, next up, I'm going to talk about my cross stitch, but I'm going to pause you. I need to clean up my mess and I need to change. Hold on. Okay, welcome back. Okay, cross stitch. I had two finishes in June very happy about or this one was at the end of May so this was my Mill Hill kit and it's called Moonlit Kitties and here is my finish I love it I love the colors they're so bright and I really I'm very happy to have this with my Halloween decorations and I will definitely pull this one out since my kids have gotten older I don't decorate for Halloween so much but I'm definitely going to pull this one out now, the finish, I am not totally happy with the finish. I just turned it into a flat fold. I think it should have been framed because, you know, like there's so much going on. I think it really needed just a solid um, inch of frame just to, I don't know. I just, I think framing would be better. Um, I don't love doing flat folds. And... Yeah, I just don't think it was the right finish for this one. I don't know that I could take this part now and um, put it in a frame. I'll have to see. But anyway, I love the stitching. I love the finished product. So this was my Mill Hill Monday project. Now I haven't done any, oh, sorry, I haven't done any more uh, work on Mill Hills just because I was busy doing other things. I wanted to just finish off some other things. So yeah, Moonlight Kitties. Very happy to have that done. I'm pleased. And my other finish was a Stitch Mania piece and it's the Stitch or Die pin cushion from Heartstring Samplery. Put something there. There you go. That's better. So I chose all my own colors for this. I just used the picture on the pattern as a guide, but I wanted to stitch it with silk, so I just picked um, whatever silks I had that kind of matched. And if you are thinking of stitching this, just be aware that the space between 
these motifs on the border are not always the same. Um, but so yeah, you do have to pay attention to that. Yeah, I changed a few colors, but um, I, I'm so happy with it. So I just turned it into a pillow. I used a chenille look trim. Oh, there you go. Can't even see that. A chenille look trim. And I thought that would be a little bit more difficult to sew on, but it actually is not. So what I used was I have, this is yarn. So this is Bernat Baby Blanket yarn that I dyed. So I have a couple shades of pink and a couple shades of blue and then this sort of raspberry color. Now, I know you can buy this yarn in all different colors. And um, if I didn't have a cupboard full of yarn, that's probably what I would do. But I do have a cupboard full of yarn, so I only want to store one skein and not eight skeins. Now, if you're thinking of dyeing this yarn yourself, it's totally easy to do. I just found when I use the regular RIT dye, it won't take. So I bought the RIT dye for synthetic fabrics and I had much better luck. So what I would do is I would just, you know, make a pot of almost red and quickly dunk my yarn in and rinse it out. And then I dipped, I think all of it again in a coffee tea mixture just to sort of um, age it up a little bit. What I was going for was sort of Blackbird design colors, just pale, pale, muted, faded pastels, I guess. And it's funny that the coffee tea um, will dye the yarn. So this is just the white yarn that I dipped in a coffee tea mixture, but it won't take the regular writ dye. So I don't know. But anyway, so if you're interested in that, that's all you need to do but use the RIT dye for synthetic, which is also why I don't have a whole ton of colors because um, I didn't want to buy a whole bunch of bottles. And that was it for finishes. Then I got working on my Dimensions Kit Wreath of All Seasons. So like I mentioned before, what I'm hoping to do is uh, stitch as much as I can of the season while it's in season. So I was working on spring last time. And I think I had just done a bit up there. And I decided that I really needed to crack on because it was almost the end of June and almost time to switch over to the summer part. So I got cracking on that. And then once I got into it, that's really all I wanted to stitch on. So I just kind of kept going and going. I almost got spring done, but not quite. I will definitely have to revisit this next spring. But that's what I got finished. So I just started working this blue part is in the summer portion. So I just started working on that. So I just started working on that and then I had to put it down to work on something else, but I'm very pleased. And it just reminded me again, <clears throat> excuse me, that with Dimensions kits, it's really not a, for me anyway, I can just stop and start and just pick up and stop and then pick it up again. I really need to put a lot of time into it and then I really see the progress and then I want to keep going. And, you know, I have enough Dimensions kits, so, and I, you know, of course I want to stitch them all. Um, but it's just one of those things that you really have to put at least, I would say, a week at a time into it. Now, I did, I think, almost two straight weeks of stitching on this. And I didn't get bored, which is unusual for me. But I'm very pleased with my progress. And the summer portion... As you can see, 
actually isn't that big. So I think I should be able to make fairly good progress on it um, over the summer. But the fall is quite large. I doubt I could get that finished in that season. So we'll see. And is that it? That is it for cross stitch. I feel like that was hardly anything. But one thing I did get back into is sewing. So I got a new sewing machine in April and then it sat in the box for a good number of weeks. And then I took it out of the box and it sat on my desk for a good number of weeks. But I finally busted it open and I got sewing. And I actually have two patties to thank for um, getting me back into it. So the first is Patty Smith. Patty Smith has a floss tube called Patty Smith. Now, Patty had been showing some sewing that she had been working on, and I wanted to make that stuff too. So, the first project is called the Boxy Drawstring Bag, and this is from yuanstudio.com, and I will, again, I'll post the link for that. But, I mean, this is what you print off for the pattern, so it's a free pattern. So the other patty that got me back into sewing was um, my friend Patty from California, who's freaking Froggin on Instagram. And she had sent me a bunch of lovely fabrics that I wanted to use. So this is, I made this boxy bag out of this beautiful green fabric, which I'm thinking might be a William Morris inspired one. And I'm just keeping some interfacing bits in it. So that's the inside. I mean, it's huge. It's really huge. You can fit a ton of stuff in here. So just for instance, I'll put in my yarn and my socks. So there's still lots of room. And then you make the ties for it. And there you go. So the only thing I would change for next time is I won't make these fabric ties. First of all, they're time consuming to make. Second of all, I find that they're easy to pull when you want to close the bag, but it's harder to open the bag. And also when you open it, it twists, it twists the um, ties. So then you're either you leave it and it doesn't like look very nice or you're always fiddling to turn the thing so for my next bag and I've got the fabric already for that I'm going to just purchase some cording from the fabric store but yeah super pleased with that this was my very first attempt at this and I couldn't find anything wrong with it at all so this designer actually has a couple of other free tutorials that I'm looking forward to trying out for more bags with more of the pretty fabric from Patty too. The other project I worked on is it's just called Mending Kit, and it is from MichellePatterns.com. Now I purchased this pattern off of Etsy uh, quite a while ago quite a few years ago, because I saw it on a podcast, uh, So Raimi. So she was making them, and she would sell them in her Etsy shop, which I will link below, and they would always just go like that. It was so super popular, and I thought it would be fun to try it out. So this was my first one, and this was a pretty fat quarter. There you go that I got from Walmart. So learned a lesson with this one. If you're using directional prints, you need to do some adjusting. So I actually had to cut the fabric and then join it so that it would be upright in the back and upright here. Because otherwise, like this is one whole piece. And if it was upright here, it would be upside down here. And I knew that would bother me. So I, cut the fabric and joined it, and then I just covered up the join with this trim. Um, yeah, this was the first one, and again, I'm very pleased with how it turned out. Often the first one is not a good one. 
Now I wanted to show you how much this actually holds. So it has a magnetic button clasp on it. So there is a pocket up here. So if you wanted, you could put your needles in there. And then there's a large pocket here. So I have a notebook in there. I have my neck light in there. And then this pocket here has um, a divided pocket. So there I've got a pen and I have scissors, a crochet hook. There's just some knitting needles, which are just for show because I don't really need. I have hand cream in here. I have a tin of stitch markers. It's making all that noise. Yeah, so it holds a lot of stuff. Now I considered putting a pocket across the back and I mean, it would certainly be easy enough to do but I figured there's already enough pockets. And I had put this across here so that you could hang uh, stitch markers from it, but I've decided that I don't like that so much because it sort of gets in the way. So on my second one, which is my favorite one, I didn't do that. This is the second one. So I just put the trim across here, but you can't hang anything off of it. And yeah. So this is the one I'm totally keeping this one because I love this fabric. I think I got this at the thrift store a couple of years ago. It just reminds me of like vintage wallpaper in summertime for some reason. And then on both of them, I put this vintage button. I have, these might be my last two. I love these so much. I try to use them wherever I can. So yeah, it was fun. And there are a lot of parts to this pattern. Um, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. So I'm planning on making a couple more. My daughter has sort of expressed an interest in one, but maybe a little bit bigger. So if I can figure that out, then I'll do it. And yeah, so that was fun. And then the other thing, and the last thing I'm going to talk about, my new machine came with a quilting package, so which means it just came with a walking foot and a free motion foot. So I got to try the walking foot out, and I finally finished my Christmas quilted row. So I had showed this before. I think I had just finished the quilt top. This is the retro Christmas quilt from Amy Smart. And she's from diaryofaquilter.com, I believe. So this is the original pattern. I believe it's a paid for pattern, but it oh, wasn't very expensive at all. And I used um, most of a fat quarter bundle for it. So I won't open up the whole quilt, but I used my walking foot on it and it worked perfectly which was so great because the walking foot on my old machine did not work perfectly and it was um, still bunching up in the back and this one is perfect. So I was able to go this way and this way and get no puckers anywhere. And I just used, I had made a scrappy binding out with the leftovers. You can see part of that. And I thought like, Kudos to you, Jen, because when I was putting the binding on, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to have enough. But I had made the perfect amount of binding. I only had this much left over, which I didn't even have to cut off. I just had to turn under and sew it on. So I was very happy about that. And then it's backed with a flannel sheet that I had picked up at Walmart, I think, after Christmas. And it's not really Christmassy, but it's... Uh, winter-ish, so I like that. So very pleased to have this done and you know next or this December I will just be able to pull it out and put it on the back of the couch and it's not a project that I have to think oh I need to get that done. So very pleased about that. And that is it. So what am I at 34 minutes? I'm surprised I got that done in time. I have no sewing projects on the go currently. I'd like to get back into it, but it's really hot in my craft room right now. So I am probably not going to sew for a bit. And I'm probably not going to be back 
to do another update until August, I don't think. So anyway, I hope you have a lovely summer and uh, you know that you get to do a lot of fun stuff. Where I live, all of the restrictions are going to be lifted on July the 1st. So that's kind of exciting. There will be some places you still have to wear masks and I think most employees everywhere are still going to have to wear masks. Um, unfortunately, but that also keeps them safe. So I'm looking forward to that going on and maybe going somewhere. Who knows? But anyway, I just wanted to come in for an update because it's been a while. So thank you for sticking by for this like hot, sweaty mess <laughs> that I have been and the rush in the beginning. And uh, yeah, enjoy your summer and we will see you when I see you. Happy days, friends.